Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today I want to go show you a plant that I totally splurge bought. I was really excited. You know, I went to the nursery to get some fertilizer and found that they had a Daphne plant available. So I totally bought it and I found a place where I think it might work. I'm hoping it will work. I know that Daphne's, you have problems with them uh, in our area in Utah. So let's see if we can get it to grow. And let me show you where I'm gonna plant it. Now I hope you can see me. We're out here by my American flag. It is the 4th of July. And right here in front of my blue spruce and in front of my hardy hibiscus, I am going to plant the Daphne plant. And I have to tell you, it smells so good and it is absolutely gorgeous. Let's show you what it looks like. There is my brand new Daphne. This one is a different variety that I hadn't heard of. It's called Summer Ice Daphne. And from what it says, it will bloom all summer. So we're gonna try this one out. So to plant this, we're gonna dig a hole a little bit bigger than the pot. I'm gonna try to keep it in between my two drip lines because I don't want it to get a lot of water. From what I've heard, Daphne's do not like wet feet. They like to dry out a bit. So if I'm, you know, the soil in here is raised a lot. It's a sandy topsoil that I brought in for this project that I, you know, this new planting that I've done. So I'm hoping it has enough good drainage that this Daphne will survive. So let's get planting. Okay, so I've scraped away the mulch and now we'll dig the hole. Now we got it in the ground. I'm a little bit worried about it. Um, it was not rooted in extremely well. It, the um, trunk actually tipped over a little bit. You can see how loose it is. I normally don't like to pack soil around the trunk, but I did that a little bit this time, you know, to make sure it doesn't tip over. So I bought it from Sun River Nursery. They have a great warranty, so I'm gonna, um, hopefully this will survive. Let's get the mulch around it and it watered in. There we go, it's all planted. We're gonna water it in and I'm just gonna keep a really good eye on it. I think what I'm going to do, you know, this entire area is watered twice a week and I will just keep an eye on it and see if I need to water it more after this first watering. The soil down there seems to be holding the moisture pretty well. Hopefully it doesn't hold it too much. It wasn't sopping wet, it was just, it was just moist. I found a little bit shadier place. It's a really hot and I'm really sweating and kind of a mess. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about when I planted the Daphne, what I did with the soil, the extra soil that I dug out of the hole. Now, I never take soil and remove it from my property. To me, it's a precious commodity and I really don't have any place to put it other than the trash. And I've also never found, even in all my years of professionally planting, any need to remove soil from the property. When I dig the hole, there is of course extra soil, but what I use that for is to make a berm around the plant so that when I water it, the water stays near the plant. Now after time, that berm kind of blends in with the rest of the soil and you never see it because it's never a, a really big berm. So anyway, the Daphne is done planting and now we're going to go look at my garden and see what I planted this morning and show you a cute little surprise. First things, let me show you what I planted. In this bed, I planted marigolds, zinnias, beets, and Swiss chard. Now the reason I feel like I could plant those the beginning of July, July 4th, is I don't know how well you can see this, but there's a day to maturity on this, and it's 50 to 60 days. Our first frost date is around Octo October 17th or so, you know, give or take. So all of these, have you know 30 or two months or so before they mature which is plenty of time 
it'll be well before the first frost date. Now in the other bed that I'm going to show you, I planted my squash. Summer squash has a very short maturity date. That's 53 days, plenty of time to get a full crop. Now, um, this year, you know, I, have, I didn't plant my squash earlier on because it, number one, I didn't have space, and number two, I have had such bad problems with squash bugs that I, um, that I just haven't planted them for a while. But I've decided I'm going to try seven, liquid seven, spraying my crops with liquid seven, because that is supposed to kill the squash bugs and help you get a harvest. Now, this squash, my butternut squash that I love so much, is pushing it a lot. The days to maturity on this are 85. But I tried it, and let me show you where you tried it, and we're just gonna see if we actually get a harvest. So before we head up there, let me show you what I used. I put down some blood meal. Some raised bed potting mix because these, uh, this bed was full of garlic, which is a heavy feeder and it's been full since last fall. So it needed an update. We have huge problems with earwigs. You know, I've planted beets four times and haven't gotten a harvest. So we put down Slogo Plus, which is actually Omri rated. You know, it has spinosad in it, which is natural. Doesn't mean it's harmless. It still can kill bees, but I sprinkled that over here to see if we can get these seedlings to live. And then over here, where I harvested my cabbage, I put in one butternut squash on the back and then two uh, two Kirknick squashes in the front, and we'll see how they go. My kale is still looking great, but it's gotten kind of bitter, so I think I'm going to leave it in and see uh, if it sweetens up again in the fall. Now let me show you what I found in my gardening. Now if, you rem if you've seen the videos I've made in the past in my garden, you'll notice that I've really cleaned up the lettuce that I let go to seed all over the place and taking out some of the dill that receded itself. But down here, where I just planted, you can see there's a garden mess. And let's go very quietly, and I'm gonna show you why there's still a garden mess. Oh, and she's still there. Last time I was able to get up really close. Walk very quietly. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see her. but we've got a mama quail sitting on a nest of at least a dozen eggs. So I'd started to clean up this area, flushed her out, scared her to death. She took off, I found the eggs, so I put my uh, regular right back over the top of her. And as you can see, we can get really close because she thinks I can't see her. She even lets me water this bed. But she's so cute and I can't wait to see all the little babies. They do do dust baths in my garden. They eat my seedlings, but you know, got to go through some sacrifices for the for for the beautiful wildlife in your gardens. Now it's really hot and I'm really sweating so I am going to be done with gardening for today but I'm glad that you joined me on today's adventure. I hope you go out in your gardens, enjoy yourself, try planting something extra this year. See if you can get in a second crop. It's the first time I've done it. I'm usually way too busy in the fall to even want to deal with an, a second crop. You know, for cleanup, I like to clean up my beds a little bit early, but this year I'm going to try it. So we'll see how it goes and I will keep you updated and I hope you have a wonderful garden adventure. Mm -hmm.